Ellie Tiff on MAPC, and today I make a tutorial for you guys. In today's tutorial, we're, we're going to talk about how to do character select screen, as you would see in Street Fighter or um, Tekken Brawl. Brawl's pretty awesome. All right, so um, so it involves clicking a button on one screen, moving on the next screen, and then there's a character, depending on which button you pressed. All right, so first I'm going to get some preliminary stuff done. I'm going to create the characters, so I'm going to say characters, and they're all going to be extremely different and um, individual, and we're going to put a lot of work into them. No, not really. I'm going to create one character with all the programming, and then the other uh, guys are going to in inherit everything from that character. So I'm going to send the, I'm send the parent of OBJ Red to OBJ Char because OBJ Char is going to contain all the coding for all our characters because we're going to we're going to code each of them the exact same way. So I'm going to duplicate OBJ Red to make OBJ Green, set the sprite, and then I'm going to duplicate that one for OBJ Blue. All right. So since the parents of all of them are set to OBJ Char, it'll they'll receive all the code for OBJ Char. That way I don't have to do it three times, and that way if I make a mistake, I don't have to fix the mistake three times. So, in step that, we're going to handle the movement, and we're just going to do basic for a movement that I've done a thousand and one times. If keyboard check, BK right. If we're pressing our button, X plus equals four. Eight. Eight is nicer. If keyboard Keyboard check moving left then move left x minus equals a and I've had a big day today and I'm, I feel tired so I don't think I'm going to do the other two because it doesn't really matter what we do now we have the player control we can move right left with it so there we go the the characters don't really matter at art that matter at all. The main thing is that we can tell the difference between them to show that we actually selected it. So now, I'm going to create another group. I'm going to call this some buttons. So we're going to create the button objects that are going to go on the main screen, um, which is where we can click and decide which uh, character we're going to play as. So first, in OBJ Red, I'm going to call OBJ Red B, because B stands for button. And I'm just going to make the sprite the same as the sprites we have, that way we're um, being efficient with the sprites that we have. And then I'm going to go to the mouse left pressed event. So let me click on this box. Okay. Um, I'm going to, I can make use of a variable called global dot select. I need to define the variable. I'm going to define a different object later. I set equal to zero. Zero meaning R. We just have to remember that. Red zero, green one, and blue two. That's just the numbering system that I chose. There's no significance to it whatsoever. And then after we set global select, we're going to move to the next room. Room go to next. All right. So then I'll just go ahead and duplicate this object to create OBJ. Uh, green B sprite. I'm going to change the select to 1 instead of 0. All right. Duplicate again. OBJ blue B. And then I'm going to set it to not look for game information. I'm gonna set two two instead of one. But I didn't know you can click on information from there. That's interesting. And of course the sprite is also very important. Alright, so now now um we I need to make another ob another object called control. And this is gonna take care of everything in terms of switching characters. This is the reason you came to watch this tutorial. Um and we're going to get started with it. So we're going to create an event, and we're going to define that variable that we used earlier, global.select. I'm going to set equal to zero, but it doesn't really matter what you set it to, because the only way to get the next room is to click one of the boxes, and each of the boxes will set the select variable. All right, and then in the set event, if room um, equals, I guess it's kind of important that I make another room, that make the room. This is going on hold. All right, so we're going to create two rooms. In the first room, I'm going to create the control object and our three buttons. Alright, in the second room, this is going to be the room with our character. I'm not going to put anything in, in it. Alright, so now now I can do the segment. Okay, 
So, um, we want to, uh, this is we're going to handle creating the character in your room. So, if the room equals room 1, I believe I called it. Yes, the second room, the room where you, you're going to fight in, presumably, presumably this is a fighting game. Um, the room you're going to fight in is room 1. Alright. And then we need to check another thing. Um, last time I recorded this tutorial, the second time I recorded this tutorial, but last time I recorded this tutorial, I just said, okay, that's it, and then create the players here. The problem with that is, um, it's room 1. Once we move to room 1, it's always room 1. So, this, once you move to room 1, this will be triggered 30 times a second. So, if you just cr have that stuff created right here, then it's going to create object 30 times a second, which will probably slow down the game, and it makes, sort of, makes things really weird. Alright, so, in addition to the room, we're going to say, and spawn equals true. So, we want to make sure that we've, um, we're, we're, it's okay if we spawn, spawn things. And then once we spawn things, we're going to set spawn equal to false. And then we need to create that variable in the creation event. So, spawn equals true, because we're still ready to spawn things. So that's my solution to that. Okay, now we're going to handle um, how to choose which object we need to make. And I'm going to use a switch for that. So, switch, global.select, and such. Okay, switch is something I don't use very often, and you can only use them in, in some cases. But let me explain the gist of it. So, um, I'm going to have different cases here. So, case 0, case 1, case 2. Alright, and these can go on and on until 2 to the 8th minus 1. So, there you go. Two to the, actually, probably go on longer since this is in Java. Anyway, um, uh, what was I about to say? It's actually 2 to the 15th minus 1, sorry. Um, so, the way this works is, you you, ha you know if, right? So you have the if thing, and then you have the condition, and then you have code here, and then you have else, then you have more code here. So the, the way it works is, you have the condition, if it turns out true, go here, generally false, go here. And then, this works for situations where they can only go one of two ways, or you have more conditions inside the code that depend on the first condition, and that's what this is good for. But this is good for when there's many different outcomes and they're um, mutually ex exclusive. So it can't be multiple of them. So that's what you switch for. So when it'll, it always checks for a variable, and depending on what the variable is, if the variable is 0, it'll do this, variable is 1, do this, variable 2 is do this, and it'll go on and on and on. Alright, so case 0. Um, that means that we selected red as our object of choice, our character of choice. So then we're going to go and create our red object, and I'm going to create the center of the room, so the x value is room width divided by 2, and the y value is room height divided by 2. And the object one create is obj red. And then I'm going to copy this a, a few times. Okay, and then I might as well talk, tell you about it since I'm teaching you about switches. Um, I'm not sure this can be necessary here, but when you use switches, generally when it's done with all the cases, we're going to type down default, which will be good. So if it goes through all the cases and none of them get triggered, then default gets triggered. And we're just going to go with red by default. Again, it doesn't really matter because this problem won't get triggered because we have these set up. Okay. And another thing you know about, about um, uh, switches is that You'd assume that if case zero turns out to be true, and then it it um, creates the object and everything, you'd assume that it would stop there and go back. But in reality, it keeps going, checking each one of them in case there's multiple that are true, and then until it gets to default. So in our case, if it if case one is true and creates a green, then it'll keep going until default, and then it'll create another red. So the way we keep keep it from continuing on like that, we're gonna type type down break, which will break it out once it's finished with this code and that way it won't, it won't it's not possible for it to go to multiple and we don't have to worry about the default thing so break 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 I guess just to, just for that quick and then probably important is that we make sure that they create different instances so for one it's green and for two it's blue 
All right, so that is all for our character. Actually, one sec, that was, that was a close one. I almost forgot something. Okay, so now the problem is, so we create control in room zero. Um, if you've used Game Maker before, you'll know that by default, when you uh, move to the next room, it'll clear out all the objects in the previous room, and then it'll load all the objects in the new room. We don't have any objects in room one, and since control was cleared in rooms after room zero, it won't be able to trigger this because it will no longer be in existence. So the way you avoid that is click persistent right there. So that makes it persistent throughout the game. It will not depend on which room. You create it once and it stays there for the whole game, which can be annoying in most circumstances, but for in, in cases of objects like these, we want to control it outside the realm of the room, then that's a good thing. So make sure you have persistent clicks. That's vital. All right, so now let's go and test out our game. Here it is. There's our three buttons. If I click red, I can play as red, and I can move left and right with them. Not up and down, because I didn't feel like it, but you can move left and, left and right. There you go. And then I'll close it, and I'll play it. And let's try click on a different one. If I click blue, it's blue. That was, select, that was character you selected. Okay? And you'll just have to take my word for green, because I don't feel like restarting the game again. Alright, so that is all for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you found it helpful. And if you would like to see more of them, that's also a good motivator. Um, cause I am making more. I, I have more coming. I plan to make a lot more in the future. Um, if you're interested in Java, I got more Java coming as well. T today I uploaded the part one of the, my Java series, and tomorrow will be part two, and then part three, and up to 17. So, um, that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Probably. Probably tomorrow. We'll see you about tomorrow.